today's lesson video we are going to look at the z substitution calculus integration lesson 101 let us start the most difficult part in this method of substitution is to remember to remember all these identities now in this lesson video we are going to look at how we generated this three identities from this one so it means you don't have to memorize this you once you master how to derive this three identities then it will be simple in the exam i realized that the problem with this substitution is to memorize or know this identity because as you can see these three identities they are similar to each other so one mistake or one difference in terms of a sign instead of negative you put a uh, positive everything will become wrong so in this lesson video we are going to look at how to derive these three identities so that it will be simple in the exam to actually know which identity belongs to which trig ratio so let us start the first thing that you need to know is simply this one z is equals to tan x over 2 now in this case we also need to know the sokatoa So looking at this, this is sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, uh, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tan is opposite over adjacent. Now with this, we simply construct a rectangle triangle. We let this to be our 90 degrees, and then we focus on this angle. We let this angle to be x over 2 this angle and then from here we identify the opposite side which is this one and then we identify the adjacent side which is this one and then we also identify the hypotenuse which is this one now we know that according to Sokatoa tan theta is equals to opposite over adjacent so looking at this since we have tan x over 2 is equals to z now we can see that the value of theta in this case is x over 2 and then our ratio which is opposite over hypotenuse is this one and then since we have a whole number or whole term which is z it will be over 1 so we can conclude that z is our opposite side and then 1 is our adjacent side so from this we can jump straight to our right angle triangle and fill up these values the opposite is z and then adjacent side is one then using theorem of pythagoras we can determine the value of hypotenuse which the equation is r squared is equals to x squared plus y squared and then r squared is the longest side which is opposite to the uh, 90 degrees which is our hypotenuse we are looking for that side and then our x value in this case let us say it's one so we have one squared or we can just write it like this one squared plus our opposite side which is the y value it will be z squared and then from here we take square root of both sides we are going to have r is equals to square root of 1 squared is the same as 1 plus z squared so this side it's actually square root of 1 plus z squared then from here we are good to go we can generate our ratios we need to remember 
our identities. Remember, we know that sine 2 theta is a double angle. This is the same as 2 sine theta cos theta. And then cos 2 theta is the same as, remember cos has three identities. So in this case, you are just going to use one identity. Now let us start. Since you know that z is equal to tan x over 2, then we are looking for sine x, our first identity. Now how can you express sine x in terms of x over 2? Sine x is the same as sine 2 let me actually do this. 2 over 2 multiplied by x. We know that 2 over 2 is the same as 1. 1 multiplied by x, it will give us this x. And then from here, sine 2 x over 2. So we can see that this part is the same as this part. That is what we actually want. And then we can see that looking at this, theta is the same as x over 2, and then 2 is the same as this 2. So we can conclude that we have a double angle. Now in this case, we can further expand. So sine 2 multiplied by x over 2 is the same as 2 sine x over 2 cos x over 2. Then from here, 2 sine x over 2, we can look at our right angle triangle. Remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse and then this is our opposite side, this is our hypotenuse side. So it means sine this angle, it will give us the opposite side, it's z over hypotenuse is square root of 1 plus z squared close bracket and then we look at cos x over 2 and then we can see that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse so our adjacent side is 1 hypotenuse is 1 square root of I mean square root of 1 plus z squared so we have 1 over square root of 1 plus z squared then from here, we can simplify. We can start with this our brackets. Or we can simply simplify. We know that a fraction multiplied by a whole number, we simply take the numerator multiplied by the whole number. It will be 2x over this denominator will be part of the answer. So same goes to this one. We are simply going to take this multiplied by this. We are going to have 2z, 2z multiplied by 1. It's simply 2z. And then square root of 1 plus z squared plus, uh, I mean square root of 1 plus z squared multiplied by square root of 1 plus z squared. It's simply 1 plus z squared. So our first identity is this one. Sine x is equal to this. To explain this further, we know that square root of 3 multiplied by square root of 3, the answer is simply the number inside the square root, which is 3. Same goes to this. Square root of 1 plus z squared plus, I mean multiplied by square root of 1 plus z squared, it's simply uh, 1 plus z squared. Now going to our second identity which is, which is cos x, we know that cos x is the same as cos 2 multiplied by x over 2. That is the same process which is equals to cos squared x over 2 minus sine squared x over 2. 
And then from here, we can look at our right angle triangle. We know that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Our adjacent side is 1. Hypotenuse is square root of 1 plus z squared. So we actually have 1 over square root of 1 plus z squared squared minus sine its opposite over hypotenuse which is z over z over square root of 1 plus z squared squared then from here we know that according to the laws of exponents a b raised to the power 2 is the same as a squared over b squared we apply the very same law here it will be 1 squared and then square root of 1 plus z squared squared minus z squared over square root of 1 plus z squared squared. Remember, square root of 3 multiplied by square root of 3 or square root of 3 all to the power 2 is simply 3. We apply the very same law here. It will be 1 over the square sign will disappear with power 2. We are left with 1 plus z squared minus z squared over 1 plus z squared. Now, since we have common denominator, we can take the common denominator and then we simply find the difference of the two. Now, this is the second identity of z substitution now the last one we are simply going to look at the derivative of this now before we find the derivative we are we need to solve for x this x here so we are going to start by finding the inverse of tan z and then you multiply both sides by the term causing the fraction which is 2 this will get rid of this and then you are left with x is equals to 2 tan inverse of z then we need to find the derivative of both sides Remember, 2 is a constant. We take it out and then we find the derivative of tan inverse of z. You should know that tan inverse of z is the same as z squared plus 1 dz since we derive with respect to z. And then from here, we can conclude that dx is equals to 2 over 1 plus z squared dz. This is the last identity. Now, looking at this again, we need to explain this a bit. You should know that the derivative of a negative, no, tan inverse theta is equals to 1 over the very same angle raised to the power 2 plus 1. Now that's it for this lesson video. This is Wahula SJ. Thank you very much.